You know, we've talked a lot about the ongoing loss of the U.S. dollar's status as the world reserve currency. And we've also been talking about how the dollar has just gotten really, really strong against other fiat currencies, while at the same time, let me remind you about the constant loss of purchasing power, which you and I can see through inflation. But there's also an escalating power grab that's going on between the East and the West, and even in the Middle East. And quite honestly, this could all lead to World War III. And it matters because war always accompanies currency regime shifts. It's used as a distraction from what's really happening and it justifies the accompanying inflation. Now, the reality is, is those in the U.S. will feel the impact the most because we're the ones that are losing the status as the world's reserve currency. And at the end of the day, all those dollars fall back into the U.S. We're going to be talking about this, who's taking that power and so many more things coming up. I'm Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading, a full service physical gold and silver dealer really specializing in those custom strategies. And you need to have one because the financial system is the foundation of the global economy. And we are losing our status, even if the dollar is getting stronger against other currencies and we're the best horse in the glue factory, all currencies are still in the glue factory. But who do you think would have the stomach or be brave enough to challenge the U.S. dollar's position. I don't know. How about the BRICS? I mean, we talked last month about they're forming a new currency to challenge the existing system and including the SDR over at the IMF. But the dollar's dominance, as we know, has already been declining. It's been happening for quite some time and particularly to those governments and those central banks that are accumulating the gold. But one of the things that they fear the most, the Western hemisphere fears the most, one possibility is that the BRICS basket currency could attract the reserves of not just of the group's members, but also countries already in their range of influence. And these include nations in South Asia and the Middle East, and how about Turkey? So Vladimir Putin and Erdogan vow to deepen economic ties. But the U.S. Deputy Treasury Secretary met with Turkish officials and Istanbul bankers in June to warn them not to become a conduit for Russian sanctions evasions. Mm, Well, that was in June, and... This is in August and things are shifting. So are their fears and their concerns coming true? Looks like they may be. And if so, what's next? Because we're really concerned. Alarm mounts in Western capitals over Turkey's deepening ties with Russia. Well, and that's also happening with China as well. But officials warn of retaliation if Ankara helps Moscow evade sanctions after Erdogan and Putin agreed to increase cooperation. Hmm, what kind of retaliation? The conflict between Russia and Ukraine has underlined Turkey's strategically important location, controlling access to the straits that link the Black Sea to the Mediterranean. So here's the Black Sea and here's Turkey. So that's a pretty big area. And here's, uh, here's Ukraine right there. Okie dokie. Washington has warned repeatedly that, will, that it will hit countries that help Russia to evade sanctions with secondary sanctions that target violations beyond the U.S. legal jurisdiction. However, and this is a big however, 
the EU has been more reticent about doing this because they jumped in with both feet when Russia attacked Ukraine. And now what did Russia do? They turned around and they used energy against them. And this crisis is still unfolding. So the EU is not so anxious to go in and start throwing sanctions all over the place because there's always unintended consequences. You know, you have to look at every single area. So what I'm seeing here when I'm reading this is that uh, maybe our ally with, or our allegiance with the EU isn't quite as strong. Maybe we can't dictate as much as we think we can. Because at the end of the day, and this is what's happening all over the place, even you know on, on every single level. But remember, it's all about confidence. This is a huge con game. So back in 2008, the banks lost confidence in each other as witnessed by the plummeting, and then it goes away, of the interbank lending rate. And then in 2015, when the Swiss came out and said, we will, we will continue that peg with the euro. We will continue it. We will, that is our highest priority. And not two days after they said that is our highest priority, boy, they severed that tie. So central banks lost confidence in each other. And recently, just what, a month-ish ago, when the central banks, Bank of England, the Fed and the EU no longer giving you forward guidance and Wall Street realized that they can't with all confidence know what the central banks are going to do. This is a continuation of that because now you're looking at the US and you're looking at the EU and they may not be exactly on the same page. And when you're looking at that part of the world, really who is greatest in jeopardy? Who has the most to lose? The U.S., because it's an island and it's away from that, you know, we have a much stronger position. So we may talk big, but are we really willing to pull that trigger? And if we do pull that trigger, will we be alone in pulling that trigger? This is really interesting and we're going to have to pay attention because there is a possibility of a war brewing over Taiwan. And the U.S. is running out of time to prevent a cataclysmic war in the Western Pacific. So we have a war right now between Ukraine and Russia. And there's a lot of hot spots that are erupting in Israel, in the Middle East. And now China and Taiwan. I mean, do you see this? This is why the possibility of World War III, it's very real. Uh, let's see, Zing, oh, Jing Jinping appears to be preparing for an even more consequential onslaught against Taiwan. Fueled by a dangerous mix of strength and weakness faced with profound economic, demographic, and strategic problems, it, meaning China, will be tempted to use its burgeoning military power to transform the existing order while it still has the opportunity. So it's kind of like, you know, somebody that's drowning out in the lake and you go out and you try and save them. They may take you down with them just because of their fear and also because they're, of their strength, they could take you down as well. And that's what they're really talking about here. China, they feel, uh, the, the author of this feels is, you know, in a very precarious position with their current economy and with what's happening even internally. This is such a big deal with the rioting and the defiance from the population. That's not something that you really ever see in China because everything is so controlled but they appear to be losing control. And so they're gonna grab at anything here. And Taiwan might just be what they need and the excuse that they need. This peaking power syndrome, the tendency for rising states like China to become more aggressive as they become more fearful of impending decline has caused some of the bloodiest wars in history. I really hope that this is not going to be the same. But unless the U.S. and its allies act quickly, 
it could trigger a conflict that would make the war in Ukraine look minor by comparison. I really hope that, that they're wrong about this. But I want to show you um, a real text stream from a person that I know personally, and I'm not going to use any names because I want to make sure that everybody is protected on this. Uh, but this person does a lot of business with a factory in China, and so they have a relationship. And the question was, tell me more, and this was just on 822, so this is current. Tell me more about what your news is saying. And her contact in the Chinese factory said, government said there will be serious consequences. Most people were thinking war since governments claim Taiwan is totally a part of China. All the people around were concerned it and watching the news all the time. Most important is most people are supporting the war if it happens. But government didn't start the war. People in Taiwan are laughing at us because most of them don't want to be a part of China. As our own people, we are disappointed at government. I mean, some of this is really telling, and I hope I'm, I mean, this is all in English, so I didn't have to translate any, but this morning, government stops many imports goods from Taiwan. And she said, I have some concerns about our business too. So this is boots on the ground. This is somebody that lives and works in China and has been dealing with all of the lockdowns and all the other things. And actually what happened was in this particular case, but in many cases, the workers actually just lived in the factory. So they didn't go home. They just lived and worked and they didn't go anywhere because it was lockdown. So I thought I wanted to share that with you because this gives you an idea with the people that live there, the, just the normal average person, what they're seeing and what they're thinking. We're going to see if it gets more aggressive with Taiwan because China has been firing missiles and doing all sorts of exercises near and around Taiwan in response to Nancy Pelosi's visit. They got very aggressive with it. Within hours of her departure from Taipei on Wednesday, the island's defense ministry said China sent more than 20 fighter jets across the median line in the Taiwan Strait, the midway point between the mainland and Taiwan that Beijing says it does not recognize, but usually respects. Yeah, not anymore. In addition, the ministry said that 22 Chinese warplanes had entered its air defense identification zone on Thursday and that all of them crossed the straight median line. So they're getting very aggressive. They're showing who's in control and who's in power. The Chinese missiles flew over Taiwan Island for the first time. This is a big deal. But they usually recognize that. And now, for the first time, they flew over the Taiwan Island, representing a major escalation of China's military intimidation against Taiwan. Look, where this is going to go, I mean, we're going to watch and see where it goes. But I'm wondering if we're going to end up at war with China here in the U.S., I don't know. That's a real possibility. But what has China been doing in preparation? Similar to what Russia did. They've been accumulating gold. And no gold leaves China. So, you know, do we really know how much gold China has? Probably not. They're not going to tell us. But they know that gold runs no counterparty risk. And there's a finite amount of it. And it doesn't matter what the form, it's all recoverable. And it's used in every single sector of the global economy. So you always have demand. I don't know why nobody else talks about that. That is simply a fact. And when you're looking for protection of your wealth, what do you want? Do you want something that has one area of buyers? That's it. 
So those area buyers go away, you know, your price plummets and your ability to sell it is extraordinarily limited. Or do you want something where there's demand in jewelry and from the financial sector and the central bank sector and manufacturing and electronics and art and food and on and on and on every single sector. It has the broadest base of utility and the broadest base of buyer. That's what I want when I'm looking to protect my wealth. Maybe it goes up, maybe it goes down. It's easy to manipulate, but I'm telling you personally, I am not counting on Wall Street to tell me the true value of an ounce of gold. Because at the end of the day, that's how they do the re overnight reset, that overnight revaluation. They take this fiat money dollars that have no intrinsic value and they revalue it against gold money that is all intrinsic value. And that's when you're going to see gold express somewhere near its fundamental value and probably overshoot. And that's what's going to enable you to hold your purchasing power and your wealth and take advantage of the opportunities that present during these periods of time. Gold is the only financial asset. This is according to the Bank for International Settlements, the central bank or central bank. The only financial asset that runs no counterparty risk. Maybe that's why the central bankers hold so much gold. Because we've seen over and over and over again, oh, bank doesn't trust bank, that's counterparty risk. Central bank doesn't trust central bank, that's counterparty risk. Wall Street doesn't trust central banks, that's counterparty risk. Going into, I mean, open your eyes, look around you, you see the chaos that's building. And it's getting more and more volatile and more and more chaotic because we're at the end of this currency's life cycle. It is so critically important for you to hold physical gold and silver in your possession. Because if you don't hold it, you don't own it. And this is not getting any better. We are headed to World War III because this is a much bigger shift than what I lived through back in 1971. This is closer to the cata the catalyst, the cata, I'm sorry, I'm all excited. This is a cataclysmic shift, period, end of discussion. This is the end of the, com of the current social, economic, and financial system. You need to have food, water, energy, security, barter ability, wealth preservation, community, and shelter. And by the way, if you want more information like this and you haven't subscribed yet, you better click that button on the bottom so that you know what's going on. Because I don't know a whole lot of other people that have studied currency life cycles as long as I have. And that's what I know better than anybody else that I typically talk to. And this is happening. Just believe it. It's a paradigm shift. But you've got to make that if you want to save your family and yourself. Make sure to watch my interview that I just did on Tuesday with Chris Martinson. It's out now. I love this man. I've been a huge fan of his since pretty close to when he first started his channel. He's brilliant. And also, if you have not yet started your gold and silver strategy, click that Calendly link below and make a time to talk to one of our consultants and let them help you develop your own specific strategy. Because if you don't plan, you are planning to fail. The elites have a plan. And, you know, to be honest with you, I'm not convinced that all of this isn't on purpose. Are you, you think they're really going to even, I mean, we're at the end. They can't save this system, but you need to save yourself and you need to be as independent in every single way as possible. So if you like this, please give us a thumbs up. Please make sure to leave a, a comment and 
share, please. The more people that understand what's really happening, the better we can all protect ourselves and the less opportunity that they're going to have to come in and cram down our throats things that are not good for us, but good for them. No, no. Get gold. Level this playing field. Keep choices for yourself. That's what gold and silver do. It means that you have choices. Because if you don't hold it, you don't own it. And until next we speak, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.